thank you, Charlie, for having me, and thank thank you all of you for uh, for being here and listening to me and giving me ten or fifteen minutes. I will say, when I was on the town committee last, I had a lot more hair. So for those of you who don't recognize me, uh, I'm Arun, and, um, and and this was a much smaller town committee. I think that it's it's clear that there's been so such growth and energy in Glastonbury. Um, that's really exciting to see. Um, and so uh, it's great to be back. It's great to be in Glastonbury. Uh, my wife grew up here, actually, and it's, it's a community we care a lot about. Um, my name is Arunin. I'm exploring a run for state treasurer, and I thought I could tell you a little bit about myself and why I'm doing this. And uh, and maybe if we, if we have time, then Charlie, feel free to call me off at any point. But if we have time, I'd love to grab uh, some questions. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm an attorney. I work downtown in Hartford at a firm. I represent financial institutions. Uh, and I'm also a husband and I'm a father. I've got four small kids between the ages of two and four. Uh, which, yeah, uh, which, which is quite a handful of, and a great story. So feel free to ask me about that if you want. <laughs> but, uh, I, I think a lot about my kids in there. <laughs> We, 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 uh, we adopted two and we had biological twins. Um, so <laughs> I think a lot about my kids when I think about their future in this state. And that's a large part of the reason I'm exploring a run for state treasurer. You know, I think about the state they're going to inherit. Uh, and I look forward, I talk to parents who are a little further down the road than me, who have kids who have gone off to college for the first time or got their first job out of college. And they wonder if they're going to come back to the state. And I, want, I hope my kids do. You know, I think this is a great state with a lot of strengths, a lot of opportunities. But we have real challenges that we need to work together and get past. And so my kids are a big reason that I'm exploring this run. My parents are another reason. My, my parents are, are my heroes. They fled a civil war in Sri Lanka, uh, where they're from, uh, as refugees. And they, they traveled to England and Zimbabwe, and they ended up in the US. Um, and they really sacrificed and worked hard and, and struggled to give my sister and I opportunities that, that they didn't have. Um, <coughs> because of their foundation, I've been able to build a successful life. But I think also because of uh, their refugee experience, they, they really saw the value of having a community, having lost their homeland and bounced around for a few years. They saw the value of having a community and the value of investing in a community and investing in the future of a community. And that's a value they pass on to me. And so when my wife and I, when, when I got my first real job at a law firm, we bought a home in the south end of Hartford in a neighborhood um, where we felt like we could be a resource to our neighbors. And I know that people drive by my neighborhood and they might see blighted properties and uh, they might hear about the crime and they might see a neighborhood that they think is a neighborhood in decline. And that's not what I see. I see the potential in my block, in my neighborhood, and the kids that live there, and the families that live there. And for me, that's a microcosm of this state. I think that it's really easy to look at the headlines of the state and view it as a state irreparably in decline. And I don't buy that. I think that Connecticut is a state with a lot of strengths, a lot of opportunities. And if we can work together and use our strengths and use our uh, gifts and, and work collaboratively to come up with solutions to get past our challenges, I really believe that we can be a state that's brighter and that, that's stronger. And so that's why I'm exploring a run for state treasurer. I think that. Our state treasurer needs to be someone who, number one, people can trust to manage pension funds. Number two, someone who has a vision for economic development in this state. And finally, somebody who invests with values. So I'd like to tell you what that means to me. First and foremost, the job of the treasurer is to <coughs> invest our pension funds. That's $34 billion. That's a serious responsibility. And that's 212,000 uh, hardworking men and women lives. It's their pensions. It's their livelihoods. These are teachers who've served in our schools, who every single year take money out of their pockets to pay for school supplies, who take time away from their kids to be with our kids. These are social workers who serve across our state. I think about the social workers who worked with our family as when we were foster and adoptive parents, and, and the, the, the lives that they held in there and the balance that these kids in the most vulnerable situations in their lives. And we made a promise to these teachers, these social workers, these state workers, that when they retire, we would be there for them, that we would be there with their retirement. And we need to uphold our end of the bargain. And so we need a treasurer who can manage those funds well. I work day in and day out as an attorney with financial firms, many of the same types of firms that the treasurer invests their money with, day in and day out. I've been under their hoods, I know that world well. I'm confident that I can manage the fund well. But beyond that, we need to look at the long-term challenges to our fund, the long-term obligation, or rising debt obligations, or pension obligations, that challenge the security of that fund and our financial security as a state. And, and I would love to talk about my ideas for the solutions for our pension obligations, um, especially on the payment side. 
my wife has told me that I bore people with, with talk of pension obligations. <laughs> so I will save you. Um, but I, if, you, if you have questions, I'd love to talk about it. I, I'll say this. I think our treasurer needs to be someone who can work with our governor's office and work with our legislature um, to come up with solutions and deal with our long-term debt <coughs> obligations, get ahead of those. Um, and, and that's going to be the number one job of the next treasurer. Number two, I think that there's tremendous opportunity for our next treasurer to be a chief <coughs> economic officer for the state, to use the voice and the platform that come with the role to be an advocate for our state's businesses and a bridge between the business community and state government, to use the vote that comes on the bond commission to push for a long-term economic development in the strategy, one that looks forward instead of throwing money away as ransom at corporations and threatening to leave our state, one that looks forward to the next 100 years, 50 years of corporations, the next 50 or 100 years of innovation in this state, the next 50, 100 years of good job creation in this state, and, and has a plan moving forward to build around our strengths and build a new vision for our state. And somebody who looks at the way we, in which we invest our dollars. We've got to maintain a strong rate of return on our pension funds. That's a sacred obligation. But we should look at when, how, much of the, how many of those dollars can be put to work right here in Connecticut. And finally, our uh, treasurer should be someone with, who invests with values. When you invest $34 billion in the economy, you get a voice and a vote on what the largest corporations across America look like. And this current treasurer, who just a week ago announced that she's going to be stepping down, has been a leader in using her voice and her vote to push for greater diversity on corporate boards, to push for social and environmental responsibility, uh, to push on issues of CEO pay and PIP. <coughs> and that's a leadership role that's important to me. That's a leadership role that Connecticut should maintain. I went into the financial sector, uh, working with financial firms, because I graduated in the midst of the recession. And I saw the Im impact that it had on all of us across the economy. Um, and I thought that if there were more people like me in the room, more people who shared my values, that we could build a better, stronger economy that worked for all of us. And so I went to law school and I went to work for a law firm <coughs> representing financial institutions, venture capital funds and hedge fund, uh, private equity firms and investment banks because I thought that progressives should learn the tools and mechanisms of finance. And now I'd like to put that knowledge to use for the state of Connecticut. And so for me, this is about our future. It's about working together collaboratively and investing in our future because I think that if we can do that as a state, I believe, I strongly believe that we can build a state that innovates again. I strongly believe we can build a state that our kids want to move back to and start families in and, and start jobs in and careers in. I really believe that we are a state whose best days are ahead of us if we can work together and get past our challenges. And so I'm asking you to join me in this journey where we have a sign-up sheet going around and I'd love to get your information, get you connected. Um, but we, we'd love for you to be a part of this process and, and share your ideas and uh, work together to, to create a brighter and brighter future in the state. So I want to thank you all for your time and thank you for listening to me. Um, and I do thank you. I'd be happy to take any questions if there are. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. We'll take a couple. No, it's a, it's a very good question. I, if I were on the bond commission, um, I think I think I would have voted differently on, on that. Um, but I, you know, I think that it's it's a mistake to look at that as an isolated incident. Uh, we we haven't talked about a long term economic development in this strategy um, in a collaborative, really collaborative way. We spend as a state on a per capita basis more on economic development than any state in the nation. Hmm. We also spend as a state on a per capita basis. <coughs> the least in infrastructure development of any state in the nation. And so, um, you know, we, there, we, we have to look at our dollars and how they're getting put to use and, and what the strategy is. What's the long-term plan? Where do we have strengths in this state? And where can we build economies of scale? And, and what, are the, what are the things that are working in this state? I mean, we have, we have the, the seedlings, I think, of a great biotech sector in New Haven. There's, there's this idea of an insurance tech hub in Hartford. And there, there are sort of little bits and pieces of that but we haven't put together an idea of, of what our strength, where our strengths lie as a state. We have a really highly educated population. And if you compare us to our surrounding states, uh, New York and Boston area specifically, I think we have some low property values. We have some, some benefits and we can, I think we can bring in um, some innovation and job creation in the state, but we haven't looked at what the long-term strategy is and we haven't talked about it as a state. 
And so I think the bond commission should serve a role in that. I think the treasurer, as, as the constitutional officer who, who most directly interfaces with the private sector, should have a lead role in that. As you know, I see where the uh, state of New York has turned down the possibility of Edna going to the district where there are other light businesses in the meatpacking area of Manhattan, believe it or not. And I think there's an opportunity right now to reach out and to see if we can retain the Edna and not lose those jobs and not lose the important component it has here in the churn city of Hartford. Uh, and I, it, we, we can't hold off on this. Someone's got to jump fast because it's an opportunity to save that right now. And I, I just wonder if your views on uh, jumping out and uh, get around the uh, other side of the horn on this. <coughs> so I, I think that that's a perfect example. I think that our, our treasurer should be out front, working working hand in glove with the governor's office, um, certainly, but out front and an advocate for our state uh, in our business community. Um, I, I live not far from the Etna, and I, I, I see the impact that has. And you know, you can say that they're just C-suite executives, and that's true, that are, that are leaving. But those are folks who have served on, on boards with me. Um, you know, they're, they're, Those are people who give a lot of money to the city of Hartford. Um, I, I see the impact that that has. But they're not leaving our state for a lower tax state or a lower regulation state. They're leaving our state for a state that's really worked on, on figuring out what their economic development vision is for the future. And I think Connecticut has had to, have, needs to go through that process and needs to show corporations that we can be a state that can bring in young people, that we can be a state that, that in which they can retain an educated workforce. And I think we can be that state. I think we have the building blocks. But I think we've, we've got to show people, plan, <coughs> pay for it. And, and I think on, in that that's both of those uh, being being an advocate, but also uh, um, helping develop a vision for our economic development is is really should be really central to the, the platform that's given to the next treasurer. Thank you. Yeah. Um, do you have a, a way or an idea of how to incentivize uh, students in the in the public uh, in the UConn system and and um, our our university system in Connecticut to stay in the state? Yeah, um, that's a very good question. And it's, it's one I've thought a lot about. You know, I, I'm not from Connecticut, and I moved to Connecticut in my early 20s. Um, and I, I moved from two larger cities. I, I grew up in LA and went to school in Atlanta. Um, and I really think that Connecticut has a lot of uh, benefits as a, as a state. I think Connecticut has got a lot that young people should be interested in. I, you know, we, I, I bought a house with my wife and our four kids the south end of Hartford that I couldn't have bought in, in any other big city in America, right? Um, and there's, there's great communities and there's great um, culture and, and, and history in the state, um, but we, we need to market that. And, and I think we need to focus on our urban areas, frankly, um, and, and we need to focus on, on creating a critical mass of, of young folks in our urban areas. And we need to focus on uh, creating the job opportunities for young people and, and uh, I think I think it's it's a it's self perpetuating in many ways, but there are corporations that leave our state because they can't find young people, and then there are young people who don't come to our state because they can't find the jobs. Um, but I think I think we need to market the benefits of our state, and I think we need to we need to have a discussion and a plan for um, how we how we build uh, the in infrastructure and the ecosystem. And that's a piece of it. How we build the ecosystem of a state that can that can be productive. And, and I'll say, you know, the, the cities that young people are moving to are cities that five years ago, ten years ago, you wouldn't have thought of as hot cities. It's places like Pittsburgh and Buffalo. I mean, those are becoming really hot cities because those states have invested in making those cities livable and making those cities attractive. Um, and that's what millennials are looking for. And I think, I think we have the opportunity to, opportunities to do that in, in our cities here. Um, and I, if we can, if we do that, they'll... That will su uh, support the economies of the surrounding suburbs. I, I really believe that. Um, but but we need to make those investments. So how do you do that without displacing existing communities or, or making people in those communities feel like there's an outside gentrification 
<laughs> that's that's making them feel like they're under siege. I mean, how do you coordinate those two groups? Interested those two groups? Um, that's a really good <coughs> question. Um, am I okay on that? Sure. Yeah. Um, so I I live in a in a uh, community in which the the average uh, the average child who grows up in my community will grow up in a single family home. Uh, under the poverty line, about 60% of the kids in my community grew up in a single family home, under the uh, single parent home under the, under the poverty line, um, and I'm I'm acutely aware of uh, of that sort of dynamic, and I'm I'm con I, I'm concerned about it. Um, I I think we haven't again I think we haven't had a conversation about the future of our major cities. We haven't had a conversation about the future of our state or our major cities. Um, and I think that conversation has to be one that includes um, mixed-use housing. And, and this is, uh, for the sake of full disclosure, getting a little bit outside of the purview of the treasurer's office. Um, but I think it's, it's got to be one that includes a lot of mixed-use development. Uh, in the city of Hartford, I'm on the redevelopment authority there. Um, with, with, all of, with all of our major uh, developments that we try to bring in outside of the downtown area, um, we've worked really hard to get mixed-use development um, uh, and affordable housing in, into each of those developments. And frankly, it makes them sustainable and makes the neighborhoods more interesting uh, and more vibrant and more, more culturally uh, in engaging. Um, and so I, I think that that's a conversation that our cities have to have um, and something we need to put at the forefront of our, of our development plans. Um, but I think it, it works economically to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>